So with everything that we've learned up until now, I think it's about time that we actually start building something so it sort of makes sense to you how we use PHP inside a website because PHP is used very frequently when it comes to user input which means that the user goes to your website, writes something into it, and then we need to do something with that data that the user gave to us. Let's go ahead and do that in this episode here. So before we get started, I just need to sort of lay out the foundation to what exactly we're doing here. Now, if you were to go inside your text editor and just simply create a very basic HTML page, you know, with the head tag and the body tag, with the, you know, the meta tag you might need to use, just a basic start to a website using HTML and CSS. That's where you need to be right now. So if you haven't set that up yet, just go ahead and set that up and you will be ready for this episode here. Now, inside the body tag of your web page, we're gonna go ahead and add in a form. And this is just going to be a basic HTML form, you know, like one of the ones you've learned about previously when you learned about HTML and CSS. So just a very basic HTML form. So what I'm going to be doing here is inside my examples that you see next to me here, I'm going to add in a little bit of HTML, just step by step. And you can just go and add it in with me and then I'm going to show you how we can use it together with our PHP code. Forms in general is the primary way that we interact with users inside a website. So whenever a user comes to your website and needs to feed you something, some sort of data or information, we do that primarily using forms. So after this episode, you're probably going to start, you know, having those epiphanies inside your head thinking, oh, so that's how we use PHP inside websites to sort of do something with things inside a website. So hopefully this episode here should be very clarifying for you when it comes to how we actually use PHP together with actual websites. So inside my basic form here, you can see that I added in a action attribute and a method attribute. Now inside my action, I simply linked to a page that I haven't created yet. It's called functions.php, just to sort of give it a name. And what you'll notice here is that I'm actually linking to a PHP document that is going to just simply contain some PHP code inside of it. And then I went ahead and included a method that I set to a get method. Now, depending on what kind of data you're dealing with, you might want to decide on using a post method instead because post methods are used whenever you have sensitive data, just to come with one example to why we might want to use a post method. The reason that we're using a get method here is because we're not really dealing with any sort of sensitive data. The basic idea behind this example here or this project we're making today is just that we're gonna add two numbers together or subtract two numbers depending on what we choose inside this form here so it's going to be a very very basic calculator that doesn't really do a lot but if you want to you can go ahead and just customize this in any sort of way or make it more complicated in any sort of way you might want to in this case here we're just going to build a very basic calculator which actually brings me to the fact that i don't think i've actually explained how we pass this data into our php file whenever you click the submit button all the data that you have inside this form here is going to be sent into the url and then passed on to the next page visible inside the URL. Or at least if you choose a get method, it's going to be visible inside the URL. Then what we do inside the other page, which in this case is called functions.php, is we grab the data from the URL and then use it inside our code, which is a very basic way to sort of pass data from one page to another, but a very effective way to do it. And that's why if you're dealing with any sort of sensitive data, like let's say a password or a username or something, then you might not want to show that information inside the URL because what if somebody is sitting behind the person while he's typing it in. So we just want to make sure that if we're dealing with sensitive data, then we use a post method because then it's not gonna show inside the URL. It's still gonna be there, but it's not gonna show. Inside the form, I just added in a simple input, which is going to be a text type. It's going to have the name set to num01, which is going to just be the, the first number that we're gonna pass in. And I also went ahead and added in a placeholder called number one. And this is simply the text that they're going to see inside the input. So when you go to the website, there's going to be this little text field. Inside the text field, it's gonna say number one. So they have an idea about, okay, what do I need to type into this text field here? Again, this is basic HTML, and I think this is something you should know by now, but I'm just gonna go and explain it again in case there are some people out there who don't know what a placeholder is. Now, the important thing to note here is that the name attribute inside the input is going to be used in order to reference to the data that we want to grab inside the URL on the next page. So once we pass this form into the next page, you know, by clicking the submit button, it is going to say num01 is equal to the data that the user typed in. So it's very important to remember what exactly the name is, and it is not something overly complicated because then, you know, 
spelling errors and stuff like that is more frequent. So make sure it's something simple that you can remember and something you can use inside the next page very easily. The next input we're going to add inside this form here is going to be a simple select, which is basically a simple drop down the user can choose from. So in this case here, I said, well, we're just going to have two different options with the drop down. We're going to have add and we're going to have subtract. If you want to add multiply or divide or whatever you might want to add, you can go ahead and do that. But in my example here, I'm just going to add two in there because I don't have a lot of space on this slideshow that I have going here. Again, here you want to make sure that you have a name attribute because we need to use that in order to reference to this particular piece of data. The name attribute we add inside the select HTML tag, just to make sure you don't add them inside the option tags down there, make sure you add them inside the select tag and make sure you add a value inside the options because once we do actually need to reference to this piece of data, the value is the data that we're going to be getting. So since the drop down is not something where the user types something into our website, we need to define the values beforehand. And then we're going to go ahead and add in another input, which is also going to be a text type. This is going to have the name as num two, which is basically just the second number the user is going to give us to calculate this thing. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a placeholder called number two. And then the last HTML tag we're going to have inside this form is going to be a button. This is just simply going to be a submit type. And it just needs to say something basic like calculate. So the user knows exactly what it's supposed to do. So with this form here inside our, let's say index page of our website or something, whatever page you might be doing this on, we can go ahead and create something using PHP. So what you need to do now is you need to create a new document inside your text editor. And this one you need to save as functions.php and make sure that inside your form, it's linking to the right location of this particular document. In my example here, I simply said that I wanted to add functions.php in the same directory as the previous page. So just make sure that if you were to change the directory, make sure you change the link to the functions.php file inside your form at the top there where it says action. Just make sure you do that. So inside my functions.php file, the very first thing I'm going to do at the top here is I'm going to create a function. Now this function here, I'm just going to go and call something like my calculator. And then inside the parentheses of my function here, you can see that we have three different parameters. We have number one, which is the one that we added in from the previous form. We have the operator type, which is the drop down that we created inside the form. And then we have number two, which is going to be the last number we pass into this function here. So you see how this sort of makes sense. We have three pieces of data that we pass in from the form and we want to make sure we add those inside the parameters of our function here. Now, the first thing I'm doing inside my function here is that I'm creating or declaring a variable called sum. And the reason I'm just declaring it without actually assigning a value to it is because I don't actually know the value just yet, but I still need to have the variable here in order to add some sort of value to it a little bit later on. So right underneath it, you can see that I created a very basic switch statement where I said, okay, depending on the operator, the operator variable that was passed into this function here, I might want to do something particular. So if variable oper is equal to add, which is the value that we added into the dropdown inside the form, then I want to take variable sum and set it equal to number one plus number two, which again, number one and number two also were passed into the form using the parameters up there. Otherwise, if oper is equal to sub, which is subtract, then I want to say that variable sum is going to be equal to number one, minus number two. And then at the bottom, I just simply added in a default statement inside my switch because in case something goes wrong, it's always good to have a default in there just to sort of say something. So in this case here, it's just simply saying that there was an error. And then at the very bottom, I'm just simply returning variable sum, which is assigned one of the values inside the switch statement here. And just to point it out, if I had not created variable sum at the top there, I would actually need to create this variable inside every single case inside the switch statement. And this again goes into the concept of reusing code instead of recreating code again and again and again. So by declaring this variable first, I didn't have to recreate the code inside every single case, which is just a lot easier and a lot less code when it comes to programming. So now that we have a function that can actually calculate something, let's go ahead and actually grab the data inside this page here because remember we did pass on data from the form into this page here because we load up this page after we submit the form. Now remember that the way we pass in data from one document to another is through the URL up there. And the way we grab data from the URL is using something called a get super global. Now we haven't really talked about super globals yet, but just remember that in order to get data from inside the URL, we either need to use the super global called get or post in order to get the type that we passed in inside the URL. So in this case here, I just simply create a variable called num1 
and I set it equal to variable underscore get, which is the super global that I'm using here. Now, had I used the post method to pass this data from the form, I would have to use a variable underscore post instead and make sure that make capitalized. Then I'm going to follow it up with a pair of brackets and inside the brackets, I'm just simply going to use double quotes and then simply write in the name that I gave it inside the form on the previous page. So remember the, the first number, I gave a name attribute set to num1 and then the select statement, I gave a attribute name as upper and the second number, I gave a name as num2. So we simply just create some variables here which is an empty container and a reference to the data inside the URL. And this basically means that we now have the data from the previous form into our variables here. And now we basically have everything that we need in order to get this working. So as you can see here, I simply echo out a string called value colon space, followed by the function that I created called my calculator. And then I use the parentheses and add in the different parameters that we just grabbed from inside the URL. So we're passing in number one, the operator and number two. Now do remember that it's just pure coincidence that I'm actually naming these variables the exact same name as we used inside the actual function. So now if you were to actually go ahead and use your website and type in a couple of different numbers and then click calculate, it should actually on the next page just give you a white screen with the numbers added together or uh, subtracted from each other, you know, depending on what you chose inside your calculator there. So this is how we can use basic data input from the user, calculate or just do something else with it inside our code and just simply do something with it. So I hope you find this episode useful and I'll see you in the next one.